Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman, live uh, from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about the overall economic situation of Pakistan. Yesterday, again, around 1300 uh, megawatt power, coal power plant uh, was inaugurated also. So, we are looking after the energy issues in Pakistan as far as CPEC is concerned. Now, the second phase of uh, CPEC has also started. Initially, when we talk about the first phase, that was primarily more about the infrastructure development, about roads, uh, building bridges, and other infrastructure uh, infrastructure facilities. But now, uh, this is the second phase, and what exactly do we mean by the second phase? We'll also update you about that. Uh, other than that, when you look at the <clears throat> foreign direct investment, uh, that isn't uh, that great. Obviously, we're looking uh, forward uh, to a lot more. We are signing a couple of... Uh, MOUs in this regard also and also some agreements uh, as far as the FTA is concerned. We really need to capitalize on that, especially when we talk about uh, between Pakistan and China, Pakistan and Sri Lanka for that matter. We need to also enhance our trade with Iran. Recently, the Prime Minister was in Iran to primarily to diffuse the situation between Iran and Saudi Arabia. But obviously, a lot of economic issues were also discussed, especially about the energy. Uh, then we were talking about uh, other facilities, uh, taking from uh, Russia for that matter or uh, bringing in other foreign investors in various sectors whether we talk about the airline industry or we talk about the steel industry for that matter and so and so forth. Uh, when we look at um, the overall remittances for that matter, if you look at that, uh, almost the same but slight improvement. So that is another area since we depend a lot on our foreign remittances that is something which is very important because now uh, I was reading a story that Japanese also want some skilled labor from Pakistan. I was just wondering that what sort of a skilled labor are they looking forward to? Because I think Japanese, they have mastered the art of manufacturing. Why would they look for uh, uh, people from countries like Pakistan for that matter, where the productivity level of the work is pretty low? But again, you look at Malaysia for that matter, they are seeking for uh, people to work in Malaysia. Obviously, your remittances will multiply after that. Even countries like Qatar or Kuwait, even Saudi Arabia, but the primarily the labor and the use of the labor is getting uh, limited. Now, since automation is taking place, things are getting really different. So, human resource management, human resource development, and uh, a lot of investment in this human capital. I think that is what the uh, current requirement is. Um, as I earlier mentioned, 17% increase was witnessed in the uh, overall uh, remittances. But now, when you look at the inflation, situation is right in front of you. The dollar to some extent is hovering around 155, 156, currently slightly stable but still at a very uh, high level. Uh, you look at the overall production, having said that certain areas have shown some productivity, some growth in the exports also but it's a very meager, very slight improvement. You look at uh, the overall uh, issue of, since every government whenever they, they are in um, opposition, they always, uh, you know, uh, sort of try to capitalize on this issue uh, that will provide jobs. But jobs, obviously, as long as your industry is not growing, there is no economic development of that level where you are uh, progressing at an average of, let's say, 8% or maybe more. In that case, yes, a lot of jobs are provided. But uh, when you look at the current situation and the population growth rate and the bulge of youth, obviously, those jobs are not available. And it is obviously not the concern of the government also. This is where the private sector has to come uh, and, and has to play a very, very vital role. Uh, as far as the imports are concerned, yeah, since there are a lot of taxes imposed and a lot of uh, other non-productive imports have been stopped as well. And uh, just look at the example of car manufacturing for that matter. Since the prices went so up, uh, most of these uh, car plants, whether you talk about Suzuki or Honda or Toyota for that matter, They've shut down their plants for about six weeks, in certain cases for about two months also. In one case, almost three months. So you can well imagine the production has come to a halt. So purchasing power again is the issue. Uh, then you talk about the GDP, 2.4%, that is nothing. It should have been around 7.4 to 8.4% if you were looking at the real growth of parts. And those potential is there, but what the government needs to do, how they will cope up with this, According to the economic managers of Pakistan, they believe that the first year in power wasn't that easy. Well, as far as the uh, IMF is concerned, they have granted you a certain loan. You 
talk about Saudi Arabia or UAE for that matter or Qatar. They're also giving you money. Talk about China, they're also investing. So you're depending on certain countries where uh, we see some sort of improvement. Uh, you talk about the government borrowing, that's again pretty high. You talk about a couple of other economic indicators where you look at the deficits, whether you talk about the trade deficit or fiscal deficit for that matter, that is still a problem. Uh, you talk about uh, the money which we unfortunately have to give to certain institutions like PIA, like railway, like steel mill and so many other white elephants, uh, which uh, is absolutely a waste. Uh, that needs to be taken care of. That money is around uh, 600 to 700 billion rupees in certain cases. If you remember when Nawaz Sharif Saab uh, took charge exactly six years ago, uh, I remember around 504 billion rupees were given to a lot of uh, investors and business community, including Mia Mohammed Mansha Saab. The interesting part was that this is something which we need to stop. And every single government always promises that the circular debt is going to be. Uh, in place but unfortunately that's not happening to production management financial management governance good governance this is what we always hear from our ministers and the decision makers even the prime minister is always talking about this but what's the way forward let's do the dissection of the first year and according to our ministers the financial managers they believe that after one year or so things will be a lot better for Pakistan. So are we actually moving in the right direction where we will be able to see things improving? That's another question. Let me introduce you to our panelists we have with us in our studio. On my right is uh, Shakil Rami Saab, Senior Economist. Thank you very much, Rami Saab. And we have with us Abdul Jalil Saab again, a Senior Economist. And we have with us uh, Zia Pandey Saab, who is again uh, an economist and also is the Director of uh, Prime Institute. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for taking out your time and being here in our uh, program. Now, sir, let's, since it's a, it's a huge subject and there is so much to, to cover and to talk about, Vane Saab, whether you talk about the remittances or you talk about the exports, but let's start off from the exports first. Uh, very meager, but slight improvement in the exports. At the same time, when you look at what is happening in other parts of the world, sir, the situation is right in front of you. I was just going through an article, Bande Saab, about Bangladesh. And Bangladesh has practically become the second largest textile manufacturers in the world after China. So you can well imagine the kind of uh, strength they have developed. And we had that strength, we lost. Sir. First of all, <clears throat> we knew that yeah, our textile sector is a major exporter in this country. But unfortunately, unfortunately, our textile sector love to have subsidies, different types of SROs and different types of uh, other uh, concessions. They even don't want to compete in the international market. Okay, how to compete and what type of the products you have to bring. If you talk to them, they will uh, give you a list of uh, 100 things okay, they want to improve. But most of the things they miss okay, what they have to improve. Okay, how they can be competitive in the international market, how they can go for the new uh, types of uh, 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 instruments which can help them to enhance their mm -hmm. competitiveness. Because in this world where we are living, there's a competitiveness is the only indicator if you want to improve your uh, exports. By uh, having, uh, having said this, you're talking about the meager uh, increase in our uh, export. That is in a, in a park rupees. If you're talking about the increase on export, that is in a park rupees. If you look at uh, in dollar term, so last year, August 2018, we exported around about, uh, uh, more than $2 billion. But this year, we exported $1.89 billion. That's mean if you're talking about in a dollar terminology, our export has been decreased. Definitely, it's, a, it's a due to depreciation of our uh, rupee. Maybe that their competitiveness has been increased, so they are exporting more. But definitely, we have to look for, wait for the ultimate impact of our depreciation. One thing and second thing. It's not about only depreciation. We also have to look at the other indicators, okay, how our business is flourishing uh, in this country and what concessions we are giving to them. And concession doesn't mean give them the free hand what they want to do. Concessions mean enabling environment. For example, if somebody have to start this business, that means okay, he has been able to start his business within due course. For example, if you look at latest uh, ease of doing a report from World Bank, 
it takes 266 days to start construction for any business in Pakistan industry. 266. If everything goes in the right direction. Almost nine months. It takes 116 days to get electricity connection. There is a very interesting game. For example, if you apply for electricity connection, in law there is a 28 days that will they, they will, first they will come for the inspection of your site. In 28 days. That means if they are coming on the 28th day, they are doing the lawful thing. Because law tell them you have to complete this in within four weeks. And other 28 days to go for the clearance for or something like that, you can get the connection then another time. So 100. And this is the data which primarily you have acquired from the World, World Economic Bank. Forum, right? He's, World, like, uh, now, World Bank. Economic, uh, he's not doing business. No, no. Since that I'll, is the public data. Yeah, I'll, I'll just is. come back to you. Now, sir, another, since we're talking about data, uh, Hilsa, we have done so many programs on, on the economy of Pakistan and the region as well. Exactly. Now, when we look at the growth rate of, or the projected growth rate, that is going to be around 2.4%. I was just going through this document, sir. Uh, the projected growth rate for the countries of this region for year 2020. And you'll be surprised to see we are the lowest in the region. Even Afghanistan is 3%, uh, Sri Lanka 3.3%, Maldives 5.5%, Nepal 6.4% growth. India is projected at 6.9 percent, 6.9 percent for 2020, and Bangladesh, interestingly, is at 7 percent, sir. And look at us, sir. This is a very sad picture about the economy of the Pakistan. <clears throat> but, sir, you must keep in one thing in the mind when you are pursuing public policy, you've got to know that all the component of the public policy involves, especially in economic development, monetary policy tax policy, investment policy, your governance structures, your civil supply system, right? Allotment policy, license, right? They, all of them, all these aspects should be well harmonized to each other. Now you will find, precisely speaking, there are a lot of disconnect between all these, <clears throat> all these different aspects of the public policy and the investors and the big businessmen and the manufacturers, they are, uh, they are literally, they are crying over those, uh, you know, <clears throat> those imbalances which the public policy of on economic development has evolved over the period of time and you know very well somebody has to come forward and he has to see you know that where lies the difficulty or where lies the omission and the commission in your mega structure of the public policy something which has not been discovered number one as a result of it what has happened bureaucracy has <coughs> developed always everywhere in the world bureaucracy has got a orbital approach narrow-based approach. Every department is concerned about its own interests, about <coughs> its own, you know, <coughs> about its own priorities. FBR is more concerned about the collection of the taxes. They are not concerned whether investment takes place uh, or not. Uh, Jinsa, you know, I may ask so, you a question here, that do you believe that uh, currently, I'm talking about this government, they have been in power for the last almost 14 months or so, uh, this concept that uh, bureaucracy isn't given giving 100% uh, you know, so they're not putting in an effort, <coughs> or maybe they're reluctant, or maybe they're, they're um, you know, uh, fully involved. No, no, not, not sure what exactly is going to happen, but a lot of people are afraid of NAB also. So this is another factor where no, you the, see that the bureaucracy, uh, this for is some not reason, a, this is, is sting uh, Unfortunately, I, I, I would say, somebody Lack of says that also. NAB, either the fear of the NAB is responsible for, you know, for, <coughs> for the s slow uh, output of the bureaucracy, I do not agree to, with it. The reason being, the bureaucracy <coughs> had to, in fact, is not, I was over the period of the time, bureaucracy have developed a very orthodox approach to the problem. They do not keep themselves abreast with the latest situation, with the latest knowledge, invention being made, or discovery made. The very fondness for the knowledge, the very fondness for the learning of the new norms of the working, they, that, that culture is missing. That is one reason. If you just compare how the bureaucracy was So the environment for innovation is not at all conducive, I mean. And, you know, that's why the bureaucracy is not ready. <coughs> as you say, there are very few people who are ready to take initiative or who would like to have a breakthrough in mm -hmm. the public policy. And if they do so, they will do so at their own interest. The other will not like to, you know, follow it. There is a, precisely there is a reason. There, there is the one, another reason is our compensation, compensatory system in the bureaucracy. Whether you work or not, you are going to be compensated. There is no, dis, I mean, at least those people who have got a bad performance should be punished. 
they should not be they should be denied from promotions but this is something which is not happening the whole bureaucratic structure its <coughs> norms of no, norms of implementation they are all obsolete that is why we will have to revise this whole system of the bureaucracy starting from the intake of the uh, civil service from the market and then placing emphasis on the professional qualification and then tying it up and qualifying it with your performance that is something which is not happening there number one and number two every government which ever came they have adopted a very they did not evolve policies on a long range basis they took ad hoc measures sometime you know ad hoc measures become essential as well with the political government as we say there are some political aspect of the economy as well but you got to see i mean that if you do not adopt a long range policy and if you are completely depending upon your short term measure just to buy the time and to please a few section of the people so you can never succeed in your economic venture that is why what it has happened there is no consistency in in our system and in that our export is, that policy is primarily Uh, the, the major, major this is issue. what you were talking uh, about absolutely. bangladesh for example yeah, they have consistently evolved their export growth they have patronized a particular kind of a culture and so the way they government. have acquired the market share in the text uh, yes number one they, 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 i mean they have mastered the arts i mean the kind of machinery they are using the kind of skills they have developed uh, within their own uh, but initially sir state patronage I mean, was uh, available on, a, on the basis of consistency apart from Plus, that uh, the high profile advantage also bangladesh i mean regarding the tariffs and and, and so many other issues bangladesh has uh, secondly, the, has the edge sir i'll just come back to bande saab now now since <clears throat> jil saab was talking about the issues related to the monetary policy also in the state institutions let's start from the state bank of pakistan for that matter sir a lot of people do believe uh, that because of certain steps taken by the state bank of pakistan uh, you know they blame them uh, for the a sort of uh, you know restriction as far as the growth is concerned looking at two aspects one is um, 13.25% uh, is the market price that that's very high I, one of the highest ever i would say i mean <laughs> 13.25% as compared to the regions and secondly they believe sir the rupee is still overvalued explain that to us sir okay first the interest rate interest rate is basically a phenomena of inflation basically that is like worldwide i mean to say the person who is sitting as a state bank governor he is a conventional economist he is not a heterodox economist so it means whatever he is following he is following the same prescription which is followed by others i mean to say state banks or central banks in the world as far as in uh, nominal terms when you are talking about 13.25 13.25 is reflecting the ground realities maybe you can i mean say in uh, in turkey it was higher than that it was not like that and when turkey was progressing in 2000s their interest rate was much higher but it was reflecting things on the ground also but still they developed so that is one of the issue as rame has also said said that competitiveness is not only linked with the interest rate There are lot many but, other but, factors. But, but sir, at least you need to have some money. I mean, if there is no money to to credit. I mean, or uh, people are not ready to take that money on that kind of a uh, rate, sir, because of the other variables, so many other factors. That how will you return it back? I mean, looking at the current situation, sir. Now that is another story. That once I am just trying to tell you that interest rate is only one factor, one element. Okay, it's not the total element for making your decision. if the decision makes sense as you have yourself said that there, there are so many other factors also which are affecting it that's why people are not taking the money if those factors were not there the people are going to take the money even at this rate also and they are going to invest in order to make more money people are not stupid if they don't want to just because the interest rate is at 13.25% and they are not going to take the money that doesn't happen like that in the world okay one thing is this in in japan you have zero interest rate but people are not investing Now that's the point you need to understand. It's not the fallacy which creates here for the people. Oh, interest rate is high. That's why people are not investing. At zero interest rate, people are not investing because it doesn't make sense for them also to make money to make return on money. Second question, your was pertaining to 
that was the first one was about the interest rate. interest rate and secondly you know when you talk about the uh, state bank of pakistan a lot of people believe that uh, overvalued uh, the, the, the rupee primarily uh, is still overvalued sir no that is also a subjective statement you know you have to qualify that statement also na when you i'm saying that interest rate should be 11% or 10% qualify it you are saying that the rupee should be 200 rupees to a dollar you have to qualify it why it should be 155 why it should be 200 i mean so what i understand right now the government has kept it on free float government is not buying dollars from the market to support it artificially which was done in the last time also yeah that's why they went to no this no more injection by the state bank of pakistan in the open exactly. market exactly yeah. that's why the the rupee has taken its level and it's going to take its level in the future also i mean to say if we lose more dollars then rupee is going to go down again that's not the point that is they can sustain it like that they can only sustain it artificially when they inject dollars they develop their reserves they pressurize banks not to do it i don't think so that sort of activity is going out right now that where you can put that thing second thing which i was coming to uh, because like this ease of doing business i tell you recently we have done a conference a city conference and we have this mr almas said the president of lahore chamber and mr sayed ahmed who is the chairman of pakistan software houses association and like jalil saab was talking about the bureaucrats they both give a very interesting uh, anomaly that whenever they want to go and work with the government to the board i mean this is this public private partnership thing which they are talking about you need to have 67% uh this private sector people on the board and 33% the bureaucrats the government people then you get the project off the ground and they give the example of sundar sundar state it was done in 2 years mm-hmm. and it was just like that and likewise mr sayed gave an example technology zone which is coming up on this chakshazad side he said that you have to give primacy to the private sector in that decision making when you're going for this sort of a thing so when you I mean, so that was a very interesting formula which they gave us. Mm-hmm. That 67 percent the private sector and 33 percent to the government. We know that the government officials are more conservative in approach. They don't want to take risk. And as you are saying that this NAP thing and everything is coming, so we need to think now out of box. The how to work out these things and these things Because are working. Because you know, on one side you you are increasing the interest rate to make sure. Uh, that enough money is not circulated because that is going to affect the inflation but at the same time uh, your growth is getting affected so there, it's a very very confusing kind of a uh, equation i would say sir but sir if you allow me sir we've been joined in by abid suleri sir and let's see what abid sir has to share with us assalam alaikum doctor sir ji wa alaikum assalam doctor sir thank you very much uh, for taking out your time and talking to us now doctor sir since we were talking about the economy i mean if you go through the economic indicators things are not that great uh your economic uh, uh, overall indicators they tell us that uh, the first year of this government of pakistan tehreek insaf though they made a lot of claims they promised about good governance and they'll be able to fetch a lot of money like 200 billion dollars from abroad and they'll do this and and you know everything is going to be pretty hunky dory but now sir looking at the reality after 14 months have passed still pretty confusing sir let's throw light on that sir tell us well uh, things are not as great as uh, were expected but uh, let me say that things are not as bleak as uh, are being portrayed uh, uh, in uh, different tv talk shows and uh, different uh, uh, media analysis and political statements uh, so uh, government's uh, priority was to bring the uh, macroeconomic stability and uh, Uh, at least one can see that macroeconomic stability the initial signs uh, of recovery they are already there the current account deficit is curtailed uh, uh, the trade uh, imbalance is uh, improved uh, even fiscal deficit is improved and if you look at uh, this uh, a primary deficit for the first quarter which is the prerequisite uh, for imf uh, review uh, that's uh, well under uh, control uh, so uh, I-, i would say that uh, Uh, at a macro level things are not uh, uh, that uh, problematic uh, yes the issue is uh, there but the issue is at micro level and uh, i think perhaps government was trying to uh, start work in sequence 
uh, first uh, bringing the macroeconomic house in order and then working on micro uh, level economic issues, which uh, of course uh, is uh, never a, uh, a visible strategy. Uh, something needs to be done at the uh, micro level uh, to uh, keep uh, uh, prices uh, under control. Uh, of course, inflation is uh, uh, affecting uh, the middle and uh, lower middle income strata of society uh, badly. Uh, but on top of it, I think one thing that is uh, required uh, by government now uh, is to identify a couple of sectors which should be your engine of growth. Uh, those sectors can be uh, either the conventional and the traditional sector like uh, Textile exports or agriculture uh, or uh, uh, whatever, uh, or they can be out of box ideas, for example, those software uh, exports or uh, working on tourism sector or working on services sector, services sector exports. But uh, government should identify a couple of sectors uh, and then put all of its policy and procedural uh, facilitation mechanisms to actually uh, turn those sectors into engine of growth. Uh, appoint uh, uh, some uh, anchor uh, who can take them forward with a strong critical uh, and bureaucratic uh, uh, backing. And then uh, one should invite investors from all over the world to come and invest in those particular sectors, telling them that, for example, tourism or textile value addition or food and uh, uh, juices, uh, uh, your uh, uh, retail items, whatever sectors uh, would pick now, uh, those need to be actually uh, somehow strengthened by enabling environment. And if that can be uh, happen, I'm sure that uh, you can uh, uh, not only attract foreign direct investment, but you can also attract some investment from our uh, domestic uh, investors who have uh, money, but they are looking for some uh, profitable uh, uh, avenues uh, to invest their uh, uh, money. So if that can be done, of course, there will be livelihood opportunities, there will be jobs, and there will be uh, the contribution to overall uh, GDP as well. Uh, but if we delay it any further, then of course uh, the wave of uh, pessimism uh, that is there, uh, that would uh, negatively affect and that may erode the benefit of uh, macroeconomic stability. Uh, not only uh, that the opposition political parties, they will exploit it in their interest, but uh, also uh, the uh, laypersons, uh, they are feeling the brunt of uh, our efforts for macroeconomic uh, stability. So I think uh, that's where we are uh, standing today. So, Dr. Saab, <clears throat> now, Dr. Saab, uh, according to a report recently issued by the World Bank, now primarily uh, that was for the South Asia focus. Now, that says that uh, for the year 2020 and 2021, now it has uh, uh, said that uh, the economic growth rate is going to slow down for the next two years as it faces yet another macroeconomic crisis due to massive twin deficits, obviously you talked about that, and low foreign reserves. And it says on top that uh, the inflation, the public debt, and the fiscal deficit reduction targets would be missed. Your take, sir. Well, uh, that is uh, primarily the reason that State Bank is going for hot money. So although there's a lot of criticism about uh, uh, hot money uh, in Pakistan, that the State Bank is uh, uh, trying to accumulate uh, dollars uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, we need to send in our foreign exchange results. Uh, we are uh, doing it through uh, pursuit of uh, hot money. We are doing it uh, uh, by curtailing our uh, imports and uh, uh, trying to boost our exports. And we are uh, 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 doing it uh, uh, by all uh, other uh, means. So if we have a strong uh, foreign exchange reserves, then of course uh, this uh, current account deficit, that can be taken care of. And... Uh, uh, the, I think uh, one of uh, the positivity that is uh, helping Pakistan that uh, when we entered in IMF program, we had already started taking all the tough decisions. So Pakistan was uh, at the right moment to uh, enter in an IMF program, and that's why in the first quarter, most of the analysts they were saying that Pakistan uh, uh, would face uh, uh, very uh, difficulties in uh, meeting uh, IMF conditionalities even in the first review, which is uh, no more the case. So all the currency uh, valuation adjustment measures which uh, Shai Sakan Abbasi started taking from January 2018 uh, to regulatory duties, uh, again starting from Shai Sakan Abbasi, continued by caretaker setup and then continued by Sadumar. So all of them, uh, those have uh, made uh, Pakistan uh, a, a case where Pakistan can very 
conveniently meets these requirements. So World Bank report, uh, it can be uh, a sign of uh, a warming for the economies which were sailing swiftly. But for a, an economy uh, like Pakistan, where we had al already anchored uh, to uh, uh, avoid uh, the incoming storm, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, any further current account deficit or fiscal def uh, deficit would affect Pakistan as long as it's in the IMF uh, uh, program, because uh, the whole crux of program is to uh, avoid any such situation happening in Pakistan. So uh, at least for the next three years, I don't see any problem uh, with our uh, uh, twin deficits. All right. So Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, for your, for your uh, comments. Now, moving on to you, Dr. There are certain areas where we could have done a lot, sir, even during the last 14 months or so. You talk about agriculture, sir. You talk about uh, value addition in the agricultural produce, whether fruits or vegetables. And then you also add your uh, livestock side, sir. Look at the amount of milk we are producing and look at the value addition. We are still importing every single uh, product from abroad, sir. And the prices they've heard, I mean, they used to be around, let's say, two rupees for something. Now they are practically around 3.5 rupees. And I do not know what sort of taxes have been imposed because the moment you talk to any retailer, he'll say, sir, because, you know, we used to pay this much of amount on a certain uh, container. Now they've increased by this amount. But God knows who is actually telling them how to fix a price for any product which is imported for that matter. Coming down to the other side, sir, there seems that uh, it's not only about the decisions taken at the top or the trickle-down effect. Primarily, sir, it is about the lack of governance in majority areas. <coughs> Look, first of, first of all, <clears throat> from 1989, the time we took first a structural adjustment program, the priority of state has been changed. We moved towards the financial management. The production responsibility started to be the shaded off. If you look at that from the very first program from a structural adjustment program, you are talking about if you look at those are conditionalities, you can find the same conditionality today again. You have to talk about your <laughs> different types of the deficits, different types of the financial money, like everything, and privatization. They are always uh, asking us to go for the privatization, privatization. If you look at it, ADB did a report in 1998, which is the first after uh, two episodes of the privatization. They said only 22, only 22 industries were better off. 44 was at the same, uh, 34 was at the same level and 44 was the worst. So I don't know where we are heading. So our financial, our economic management, it seems like that is a financial management team. It's not like seems like there's economic management team. Economy is a big thing. Financing, financial management is one thing. We are very happy that our indeed this, this indicator team. And Dr. Saab absolutely right when he talked about stability according to the formula of MF. So we are getting that. But the real problem is like that when you, Barney uh, uh, talked about Turkey. So you know what, uh, generally when you talk about the public, sir, public is not concerned about the, the digits. And, and, and the you know, reports you present, public uh, people are practically public concerned about what, it, what you see on public. ground, sir, the that's, reality. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Nobody is there to check. Look that's at what I'm saying. Our production sector is shrinking and they are heavily taxed. For example, the contribution of our industry and our GDP is around about 20 percent. And you know what percentage of they are paying for the tax? 70 percent of taxes of this. Yes, country. correct. So how you will encourage them? This thing and second thing, our elite is not serious about the economy. You will find today, you will find, uh, yesterday there were reports by IMF and other things, there were people talking about the Pakistan indicators are improving. Today World Bank report is like that, your GDP is declining. All opposition party will criticize GDP is declining. All government sector will be talking about the IMF, pro, uh, IMF uh, uh, praises. Like, that means they don't have any vision, they both are just trying to play with. So what is good for me, I will take for uh, that. What is bad for me, I will throw it away. So they need to be serious about the economy. Third thing, every other body talk about the vision of uh, Azam for this country. Every other body talk about 11 August speech. But nobody talk about the speech of Azam on the day of inauguration of State Bank. But he said, what type of economic system we need? 
and nobody is, since, uh, I think, see about serious, why we should need that system. If you look at that uh, Chinese model, we, to, we talk a lot about the Chinese Do we model. have to actually follow certain models without even having those ingredients? Look, Kajajan said, Western model is not good. We have to develop our own Islam model on the basis of Islamic laws. Even he Which said, country is actually working on the Islamic laws at the moment, no, sir? Listen to me. Listen to me first. Second, Honestly, I mean, I do no, because no. I do not know the difference between the West and because if you look at the West, they are at the top. You look at the other model, I mean. Look, what it is, we talk about a trickle down. So there is no trickle down in a Western model. If there would be trickle down, there would not be a movement of 1%. So what in the Wall Street movements, like these things, like what, what is happening in uh, Yellow West in uh, uh, France, the, what is happening in Somebody Greece, in fact told me a very interesting joke. What is happening this was in actually Italy? a joke of, you know, when we talk about trickle down during the Ronald Reagan days, that one of the advisors actually, you know, he just taunted him about the trickle down and it became a So look, a and privatization, the, the theme of the, we talk about the Western privatization, you don't know first, when first privatization happened. It was happened during the Muslim period in Italy. Second time it happened in Nazi Germany. And the capitalist model took it in 70s and 80s. So the thing is like as you talk about the Chinese model, no? okay, when we talk a lot due to the CPAC, you know they identified three evils at the start of their reforms. Three evils. You know what was those evils? First, corruption. Second, waste. And third is very interesting, bureaucracy. So now that makes a lot of sense. There so the thing is that you have to look into the crux. Mm -hmm. You are talking about where is Islamic a law, a model. Was there any Chinese How model? How many Islamic no, look, banks look, have you seen no, no, emerging no, as the no, top look, banks in, in the fast, world, sir? Fast, look, I fail to understand what Mudarba is, what Musharka is, what's the difference? Hold for a second. I mean, uh, uh, before Chinese model, was there any Chinese model? We look at them the way they have... No, no, was there any Chinese model when they started in 78? They developed in 40, 50 years. So we have just started to talk about where is that model, where is that model. You know, you need to look in, into you so have many accounts, you need to understand said, where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. said, you have to develop your own model on the basis of... So the that was 70 years ago, sir. 70. We haven't been able to do so. I mean, we, we need to move on. So we have, we have to move on. I mean, After 70 totally years, we are not world moving. Is getting paperless. We are not moving. Life is going to be totally dependent on the we applications are not moving. in your phone. I mean, everything is going to get obsolete and we are still stuck in that old school of thought. Okay, sir, we have to go I'll, to I'll, I'll come back to you. Sir. Sir. We were just listening in interview, of course, a leading economist of the country was speaking, but I differ with them in, in a few respects. Number one, inflation is going up very fast. You know it very well. Secondly, we have been, we are experiencing a, a parity between dollar and the rupee. That's the, that has created a lot of imbalances. And rupee fall has, actually, rupee fall has constituted a very negative, negative impact on the economy. Number two. Number three, this excessive taxation. So these three factors have contributed very strongly towards the shrinking of the national economy. This is what is happening now. You know, that is why the the, the most important part so of the manufacturing sector. Economic, uh, competent economic managers in, in Prime Minister's team. Sir, your economy, the, Pakistan is a very How big How many country. economists you do know, we have actually? Yeah, Let me ask uh, you. You were just talking about, we were just talking about Islamic, uh, you know, the economic system like that. Number one, you know, the defect with our system is that we are not actually using those advantages which are available to us and which, with which we have been blessed by Almighty God. For example, our indigenous resource. We have not tried to develop it and we have not given value at, we have, we have not made any value addition in it, number one. Number two, the economy, manufacturing sector or, or that sector, it runs on the two, on the wheels of number one. SMEs, they are very important. You must develop mm. a proper SMEs in order to involve lower middle class and a middle class <laughs> in, you know, in the economic advancement of the country, number one. And number two, your social sector. Social sector is very important to develop health, education, and other. And here, this is the sector in which you have to give call to the class of the philanthropy and the rich people that let us come forward, try to share the burden with the people, set up schools, set up college. We will provide you technical support, government. I mean, and we will so provide the you have been there that. That is what is know, 70 that, or maybe 70 million years. That is what is. But the point is that nothing has been happening, sir. This, that is what, they, they, these are the omissions. These are the gaps in, within the policy framework, investment policy framework. 
That is why, you know, the inflation is increasing very heavily. And will continue to increase. And why the state is so eager to accept all the responsibility of the so social sector economy. The Pakistan, you know, sir? as a, as a, huh? Who else they, is they, they have to facilitate it. Why are they not ready? Pakistan is one country, you know, but we are all Muslim and we believe in the values of the charity. The, our very system of the worship, it promotes the urges of the philanthropy. Sir, for some reason, you know, we always end up becoming the kings that, you know, we give the maximum amount of charity, honesty on, speaking. On, it is maybe, a maybe, maybe a lot of people in other countries do this, not even get it documented. They give a lot of money as well. They, I mean, Bill Gates Foundation, I mean, let's put all the charity given by the yes. Pakistanis since 1947 mm -hmm. till date. And Melinda Gates uh, organization or that institution, whatever they have done, I think, that's 100, maybe 1,000 times more. They are but, 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 sir, coming back. Sir, over to you. First of all, I want you to comment on a on couple of uh, the, the areas of discussion, sir. Plus, now, it seems like a mess, sir. It seems like a big confusion where people are stuck and they do not know what to do, to be very honest. This is what it <laughs> seems like to me, at least. I want to bit digress, from sir, that, uh, please. talking about the economy, but I am interested about the human resource development, okay? Uh, in Pakistan, about 4.5 million kids every year reaches the age of 16, okay? Out of those 4.5 million, about six to 700,000 goes into the formal education, college, university, and that's it. About 400,000 kids, they go into the vocational side, okay? Do we have enough capacity to digest all these, sir? No, no, we have left about a gap of 3.4 million. Okay, 3.4 million kids are not educated. Okay. You were talking about, in your intro, about export of human resource. You were talking about Japanese asking for human resource. Malaysians, Japanese. Malaysians, okay. Qatar. Do we have paramedics, I mean to say? Do we have Malis? Do we have people like that? Everybody in this country is not going to go for their university education, as everybody was talking about indigenous mm -hmm. solutions. Mm -hmm. We are a poor country. You don't talk about people sitting in Islamabad, elite sectors, or Karachi, or Lahore. There is a whole humanity which is residing below that. Did we ever thought about those kids? That how those kids are going to become the part of your main economy? No, sir. Okay? So the important point is this. Look at Philippines. Look at Vietnam. Look at Thailand. How they have developed their human resource. Not every human resource is going to start a startup. You got, you got my point. We have to think like that. Look at Faisalabad. Faisalabad is a place we've been talking to businessmen also. What they are asking, you get an educated people. There's no, I mean, there's a shortage of educated people in Pakistan. If a business want to employ, the shortage is in skilled labor. It means what? Who is investing in vocational side? Only government. There's no private sector. I mean to say you have universities where people are making billions for the degrees which are unemployable. You cannot get employment against those degrees, but parents are giving money to those universities. Spending 3-4 million rupees in 3-4 years. Okay. Practically to become a doctor or an engineer or a dentist. Why or anything for that don't matter? we have a models like Germany where businesses and vocational integrated? integrated. You need skill manpower. I, we have seen in, in Gujranwala, the people who are, <laughs> I mean, it's illiterate, but they know how to operate a lit machine. The cobbler for that matter, or anybody. Okay. Yes. Okay. Why don't we invest on those people? Out of these 400,000 people, which are only 62% are employable, are employed. It means that still people are not up to the mark. And we are all the time talking about university education, university education. Do you think in this country how many people can afford that university education? So the problem is, even, it's not a problem, but holding a, a certificate, a piece of paper, which makes you qualify for a certain job, is that the parameter to judge your ability, sir? I mean, a lot of ifs and buts, and it's a long debate. So I think we need to do a separate program on, on human resource development because that's the key. Exactly. You always a demographic uh, dividends we'll have. Oh, my God, I think... Those dividends, you need to wait and see what is going to happen model. because they have not. Sir, the reactive approach, that's another problem. 
I mean, well, anyway, I think we, we should uh, say goodbye here and yeah. <laughs> do another show on this yeah. particular topic. But anyway, sir, thank you very much. It's okay. a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. That's all we have for this. I'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Till then, you take good care.